everybody, it's Simon Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these pillow box gift bags. Um, if you followed me at Christmas time, I made a um, pillow box um, during the festive season, um, and it was the same size as this, I believe, with a sheet of 12 by 12. However, this time I've added a handle, and it completely changes the the look of it. Um, I finished it off with some tassels. Um, I'll link in any um, tassel tutorials that I've got because I won't be doing tassels today. Use some little die cuts there. The butterflies just to tie in with the paper. This is by um, Wonderlust First Edition. Um, and yeah, I think it's really lovely. This is the same again. This is using a sheet of 6 by 6 So 12 by 12 you could do 10 by 10 8 by 8 7 by 7 6 by 6 which is this 5 by 5 4 by 4 can you imagine that that'd be really cute so um but yeah like i said this is 6 by 6 and i think it would fit in a gift card i haven't i've just thought of that now just looking at it it does look like it would fit a gift card so um i'll measure it if it does and i'll pop all that in the blog and i'll pop the measurements for this one in my blog because i'm going to be showing you this size today um and as i've been making a lot at the moment all the gift bags i'm making fold flat and that's the beauty of a pillow box is it folds completely flat so you can store these away and you know keep them until you need them there you go so let's crack on and make them so as i said you need it's from one piece of 12 by 12 so i'm using this is the i think it's tropicana by simply creative papers they're really fun and i just thought when am i going to use lobster print and I thought it's gonna it's got to be a gift bag because it's just it's just fun so I'm using that one today and you can see there they go some of them are facing down some of them are facing up so um, yeah this one works really well for both sides of the pillar box um, and then I've just got this piece here which I've already cut um, a circle from to do my little sentiment which is going to stick on the front of my bag and then the rest of this is going to be used for my handle now you will need some kind of um, something with a curved edge so whether you've got oval would be best for a pillow box you can use a, a circle plate but you will you almost want something quite big so that it's got quite a um, I can't think of the word to use to describe it but you you don't want a really harsh circle you don't want a small circle shape and when we get to that point I'll explain it because it's very easy um, and for those of you that have done pillow boxes you'll know anyway so with whatever direction your paper's going in you want that to be coming off to the right hand side in this direction here because this is the top of the bag and this is going to be the side of the bag so obviously I want all of this print facing the right way once we turn it around so make sure you've got your direction of your paper going off in this direction then you want to score at five and three quarters and at eleven and a half so the width of the bag is five and three quarters on each side and then you'll have this little half inch tab there okay so get rid of your scoreboard because that's all of that done and then this is when you need something like this now i've used these a lot and i really recommend them they are by x cut they are um cutting um uh, circles and ovals and i'll share the links because you can still get them on there's some sellers on um, amazon and ebay um they're not too expensive they come with this cutting blade and basically um again i'll share all the links but you sit this piece here in this kind of little well um, or track and it will go around and cut this bigger circle here so I mean if you've got dies that are this big then great but there aren't that many companies that do really really big dies but also then you can then go on the inside so you get two different sizes then there's also a smaller version so you can get another two and then there's the same with the circles um, and you can get a bigger kit that comes with squares and rectangles plus the ovals plus the circles so they're really really good for when you're doing bigger projects and I use them a lot for doing this kind of thing so um, Will I use the, yeah, maybe I'll use that bit today actually to show you how it all works. Anyway, so just for the purposes of the video, I'm just going to burnish these bits now. Okay, so just burnish those score lines and I'm going to work on this side just so it's easier for you to see. Now with your ruler, you just want to put a little marker, ignore your half inch tab here and along the score line, you want to come in at one and a quarter. Put a little pencil mark at one and a quarter one and a quarter and again at the bottom one and a quarter and do the same there there and there 
Okay, then whatever it is that you're using, you want to make sure it can meet that pencil mark and that pencil mark. Okay, and then all you're going to do is with your circle or your oval, you want to bring it up as far as it can go without going over those pencil marks. Hang on, come in a bit more there. There we go. And just draw around them like so. Okay, and then I'm just going to turn the whole thing around and do again on this side. Just need to make sure I keep the oval straight because obviously I don't want them being wonky. And do the same like so. Then I'll go over to this side again, doing exactly the same thing, joining up my pencil marks, flip it around. So if you're using a circle, the only thing that might happen is you come in even further and you end up losing space, you end up losing your box. So my actual width of my box is seven inches. So you want to kind of keep it to that really. And then you'll be, you know, as close to my one as possible. And then you just want to do exactly the same again with the bottom. So this time you've got your bottom pencil mark just down here. And just with my shape there, I'm just making sure it meets up with both of them. While I've got it in this orientation, I'll just do this side here. So it doesn't matter in what order or how you do them, just whatever works best for you. Okay, so that is what you should have. So in this case now I've got my tab at the bottom, but as long as you've got these four shapes here, that's what you want. So now we need to do a bit of cutting. So with your neatest cutting skills, you want to just cut around the outside one. Now I'm actually just removing the pencil mark completely. It's up to you. I mean, this is gonna be inside the bag, so you're not actually gonna see these pencil marks, although I, was, I will still rub it out. And then this one here, I'm just going to start from the middle there. And as I cut, cut right up and stick with that angle and just cut right across because that'll just create your tab there. And then with this side here, I can just kind of start from that side and work my way around. Like so. Okay, so that is what you want. You just need to do that the same on this side. So this in this case, I'm going to start from the tab. So just try and go in at the same kind of um, angle. Okay, so you can see now that's what you should have. So next um, we can do some scoring. So again, if you are new to paper crafting, which a lot of people message me saying they are, this is the easiest way to do it. Do your pencils first. If you know what you're doing straight away, then you don't need to do the pencil and you can go straight in with your um, with your stylus because now we need to score over this. So I'm just lining it back up again. Um, but by doing the pencil first, you can be 100% sure that it all lines up and it's all in place. Because as soon as you burnish and score, sorry, then that's it then. You've kind of made the marks on the paper and it's hard to change that. Whereas with the pencil, you can rub it out and start again. So now I'm just going to go over, okay, and then I am going to go and rub out these, all the pencil marks now. Okay, so that is what we should have now. Next, you need to create your handle before we stick it together. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. So I've just got this same orange here that matches my sentiment, and it's the same orange that's in the lobsters. And then basically what I'm going to do, that's why these are handy, is just here. So with my tool that comes with it, sit it in the track and I'm going to go all the way around. You just need to make sure you hold it down like so. Let me cut that out and then keeping it all lined up again still. You'll have a slight border because it cuts slightly larger than it is. 
Probably shouldn't have moved it, should have kept it where it was. Let me just... Okay, I'm doing that again. I wasn't happy because I moved it. Don't move it. So once you cut the outside, keep it in place. It was so hard because it's an oval. If you're working with a circle, it doesn't matter, but ovals are obviously, they are different. So I'm just going to cut around that one. Keep it in place, then go straight into the middle. Give me this perfect piece and then get rid of all that, keep them because they're quite handy for something else. So now I want to fold this in half, making sure it's completely married up perfectly, which I think that is. So whatever shape you're using, if you're not using an oval, then yours would be much, much easier. There we go, I've got it. So now I'm gonna pop glue in the middle of this. And it just means I've got a strong handle. So, I mean, you, depending on what card you're using, you could just do the one. But basically, if you've got circle dies, square dies, any nests, die cut the bigger one. Then die cut maybe a couple sizes down from that inside the big one and you will have something of this kind of style, but obviously in the shape that you're using. So you want basically a thick handle. So now when that glue sets, that will become nice and strong. Okay, so you want something like that. Then grab this back here, and you've got your tab. You want to stick your handle on the opposite side, so not the side with the tab. And you basically, you're going to stick it, um, I would say, um, about half an inch down. Yeah, three-eighths of an inch, half an inch. Enough so that you feel that it's going to be secure. And you just want to make sure it's nice and even on both sides. So I'm just going to measure there. So it's about one and one-eighth. One and one-eighth, that's not bad. So stick that, make sure it's all nice and flat like so okay and then with the tab you can use um double-sided tape um glue it's entirely up to you i'm just gonna run my wet glue along here this dries very quick anyway and then fold the tab under and then just fold the whole thing over because it will all perfectly line up because it's exactly the same five and three quarters on each side so you can already see there the bag coming together and how it will look so give that a few minutes just to set in place and then with this is going to go in the middle like so so I'm going to use some of my um, get my little tabs out here I've got one stuck to my finger already just to give it a little bit of dimension there um, and then also I can't find it anywhere but I've got a circle punch and it's a one inch circle punch and I don't know where it is I've got this awful feeling that it's fallen in my bin <laughs> please tell me other people have done that lost things in their bin because I, I can't find it anywhere but basically what you could then do next let me these are taking longer to get off than I thought um, is you we'll use that to create the kind of little, um, hang on a minute, I'm concentrating on that and I'm forgetting what I'm saying. So just line this up in the middle, uh, about there, like so. Yeah, so basically these now, is that set? Just open it up. There we go. It still needs a little bit of time there on that one, so I'll just hold on for a second. But basically, that one now, you just to get them started off, you have to kind of burnish them a little bit more where you've scored them. But along that curve, you just want to push it like so. Okay, and just go and pinch a bit more on that curve, just so it all sits nicely, like so. With this side here, so the piece that's on the front, this one and this one, with your punch, if you just go in about halfway, it will create a little semicircle there. And it just means when you go to close it, so now if I just carefully, again with this 
side here, just bring it all down like so. The first time is always a bit more hard. Once now those creases are in place, it'd be easy. Now this is still okay to open, but basically if you've got that little semicircle here, it just means it's easy for you to get your finger under to open. Um, but I mean, it still works. So now you can just open that up and the one underneath and you get into your bag. So again, look, you can see how easy now and how quickly it pops into place once you've done it the once. So I just don't want to, I'll lie flat again in a minute. And then again with this side, just go on in and just kind of start it off. Okay, and there you have it. I'm going to line mine flat again in a minute because that's still all drying. But how cool is that? Really, really quick, really easy to make. And I think they look really, really nice. So there you go. So I've got these two now and um, yeah, I really like them. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.